Welcome to another Kings of War Battle Report, the Epic Quest Game 13, Dwarfs versus Salamanders, 3,000 points, and the scenario was Pillage. One of the most humiliating moments in the history of the Empire was when the Dwarfs, using only mules and their sturdy backs, extricated the mud-mired steam tank, the Hammer of Middenland, and claimed it as their own. Sean Dietrich, Historian. Welcome to another game in the epic quest. This time I drag out my dwarfs. The uh, dwarfs, I actually have quite a few dwarf models now. I didn't really realize how many I do have. And so uh, I probably actually have around 4,000 points now that I've really looked at it. But a lot of mine were old GW dwarfs. And so the uh, there's just a, a little gap in what would work with the Mantic game. Just, I mean, I have none of the uh, really fancy dwarf models that uh that come in the use it in the mantic sets so uh with that said i started off with two regiments of ironclads with throwing mastiffs two regiments of iron guard with throwing mastiffs a troop of shield breakers a regiment of berserkers with a brew of strength a troop of iron watch crossbows a troop of iron watch rifles a ranger regiment two hordes of earth elementals two organ guns a steel behemoth that was upgraded Two Dwarf Lord on Large Beast, with one with a Blade of Slashing. A Berserker Lord with the Wings of Honey Maze. A Stone Priest with Sturge, Bane Chant, and Mind Fog 3. And lastly, Garrick Heavy Hand. I don't know if I have the Salamander list exactly right. I based it on the fact that he has a 2300 point list, and he added 700 to it. And so I'm thinking that the Phoenix Greater Fire Elemental and the Horde of Scorch Wings is what makes up that 700 points. But again, I don't know exactly what's in the list. We have two hordes of Ceremonial Guard with a Brew of Sharpness, one with the Chalice of Wrath, a troop of Ancients, two troops of Gecko Warriors, one horde of Rhinosaur Cav with a Boots of Striding, two hordes of Tyrants, a Mage Priest on a Raptor with Bane Chant and Fireball, a Clan Lord on a Fire Drake, a herald with a loot, a phoenix, a greater fire elemental, and a horde of scorch wings. And like I said, there's probably other stuff, but I don't have a copy of the list, and I was just looking at the pictures. Okay, John set up basically in two giant clumps, one on the right side of the battlefield and one on the left. And, of course, this one is the one on the right. And in the front, he had a Lachilodon and a troop of geckos and those kind of act as chaff and the uh, of course the lachilodon can shoot then his horde of ceremonial guard and behind those was the lord on fire break uh fire drake and the uh, uh horde of scorch wings and to the left of those is a horde of tyrants and here's the model that i forgot in the 700 points it's a uh, gecko tosh slasher that's following those guys up and uh really nothing set up in the middle it's all clumped on both ends so over here on the left flank, it starts off with the Phoenix, and then I think that's the Mage Priest, a unit of Ceremonial Guard. Behind the Ceremonial Guard is a unit of Tyrants and the Troop of Ancients. Off to the right there is his Horde of Rhinosaur Cav. Those is a very vicious unit to fight against, as I've fought against them many times now. And then a Troop of Gekotage Warriors, and then the Fire Elemental, and lastly, the Lachilodon. Okay, I was the defender of the right flank, and so I had a general on large beast, a troop of crossbows, a the regiment of berserkers, one of the iron guard regiments, Garrick heavy hand, and then lastly, a ironclad regiment. I've been experimenting with doing some labeling because especially these dwarf units look really, they look a lot alike, and of course they're painted by one person, so that makes the reason why they look a lot alike. So on the left over here is a regiment of Iron Guard, then the an ironclad unit, and that's actually Garrick in between. So you're just seeing the, the continuation of my line. And then another unit of Iron Guard, another unit of Iron Clad, the organ gun, and then a, the unit of Rangers, and behind them is the other organ gun. Next to the Rangers was the first horde of Earth Elementals, and then a the Shield Breaker troop, and they are guarding the rune priest which i did not label he's right behind them and then another unit of earth elementals the second unit and then a general on large beast over there anchoring that flank over here on the extreme left flank you have lastly the little troop of shield breakers 
and the captured steam tank, formerly known as the Hammer of Middenland, now called Golok's Fury. We did scout the rangers forward in order to take some pot shots at the uh, tyrants. Tyrants don't have the best armor in the world, so any kind of shooting on them starts to chip at away at them pretty well. Yes, I know the dwarves don't look like they ever moved, but this is the case they did move forward. Uh, you can tell because the general on the, on the uh, large beast has moved over behind the ruins, uh, which is impassable terrain. Again, we just pushed everything else forward. The organ guns were out of range, so we had to push those forward to get in a good position. They had really good arcs of fire, which is probably why John just decided not to, to uh, deploy in that nice big hole right there where we could concentrate fire on him. Carl moved forward as well. The uh, Earth Elementals moved up close to the uh, woods there. They're going to go in there and grab that objective. That's their job in life. With their armor six, they're probably pretty hard to take out, out of there. The uh, Steel Behemoth moved up, and I believe he started shooting at, at, their, at some stuff. And then the um, troop of Shield Breakers just stayed behind the hill because there was a Lakila on over there. There's no reason to get them gunned down. And then the... Uh, Berserker, he also kind of meandered. He, the, in retrospect, he should have went ahead and just moved to the top of the hill. That way he could have dominated with his flying movement, dominated everything uh, on that side of the table. Anything that's left unsecured, he could have went after. So John come roaring forward, and I mean roaring. I've never seen John move so aggressively so fast in the game, and I was kind of surprised. I thought he'd give us another turn to go sneaking up on him, but uh, uh, he had wanted nothing of that. So... Uh, his whole army comes zipping forward. The uh, gecko troop goes into the almost does not go into the woods, but go up right up to the edge of it. And so that was, uh, like I said, it was shocking to see him move that aggressively this early in the game. But John's a great guy to play, and he's unpredictable. I mean, he's last time Carl and I played him, he kicked our butts. And so uh, uh, I don't know if he learned from that or he tired of it or was tired of my trash talk. But anyway, he decided he was just going to come and get us this game. Over on this flank, John was just as aggressive. He moved the uh, gecko warriors into the woods and uh, to try to get me to uh, charge them. And, of course, then his SARS calf could go ahead and charge, or the, I'm sorry, the rhino calf could go ahead and charge that unit and probably eliminate it. Fire elemental moved up boldly. The um, Lakilodon moved over to shoot. And the uh, tyrants, in response to me trying to sneak around that, because I really was just waiting, hoping to get it cut forward he forgot about that general on large beach and i would be able to cruise into a flank and do something to him but instead he sends a whole horde of tyrants after him which is not good for me and then the uh, ceremonial guard and the phoenix move forward as well so in my turn i kept marching forward uh there was another one of his tokens over you can see it just in the uh, or objectives over in the edge of those woods and it's being guarded by a sars cavalry so i moved forward and chunk uh a couple of the uh, mastiffs at the gecko warriors and don't waver or don't kill them which is upsetting <laughs> so anyway i thought i thought that would be an easy use of those throwing mastiffs because i generally just forget spend all the points and forget about them but this game i made it a point to uh to go ahead and chunk them out first and i want to thank carl can and my buddy my for giving me some tokens to put behind the units to remind me Carl opened fire with the steel behemoth on the Lakilodon and started to uh, chip away at it. And on the right-hand side of the picture here, you see the tyrants. And unfortunately for John, the tyrants were a little exposed to getting shot at. So we put a few wounds on them uh, with the unit of rangers. Again, in his turn, John moves forward very aggressively again, moving the fire elemental and the Lakilodon up to the wall. And everything else just kind of trailed on. This time, the Saurus Cavalry moved into the woods. Uh, he, he knew I was going to get rid of those uh, gecko warriors somehow, and so and they were blocking me up, so I had to get rid of them at some point. But he moved in very aggressively, and, and uh, like I say, John is not fooling around this game wanting to get him because he had three tokens over there in that corner, and I had uh, one over here in this corner, and the rest were kind of over on Carl's side. So... Uh, that was going to, I understand what he's doing now. He's going to solidify these three and try to snack one of mine, and that's going to win the game for him. Wow, Sir John the Aggressive has decided he hates Earth Elementals. He goes slamming two units into them, uh, Tyrants and the uh, Gecko Slasher. Uh, this is not going to work out well for us, I am pretty sure. And then his Geckos went ahead and charged the 
uh, earth elementals in the woods there, and because there's a token in the woods there, and uh, uh, he's trying to open that up so that he, uh, the follow-on units can can maybe take down those earth elementals. So the massive attack went ahead and just popped the uh, earth elementals, which is very very hard to do. I don't care how many swings you get because they have very high morale, and also of course their armor six. And I'll fully admit to cheating right here. I didn't know I was cheating. For some reason, I thought that that Rangers had headstrong as well as because most of the rest of the army does. And I totally screwed this up and rolled headstrong and was going to be able to charge into his uh, big monster there in the next turn. So I decided to counterattack John. Like I said, there's a token right underneath those sar those uh, Rhinosaur Cav, and so I want it. And so I go, uh, I slam the uh, unit of Iron Guard into the SARS Cav. I know it's not going to be a ma massive outcome, but uh, it is what it is. And then the other unit of Iron Guard and Garrick go into the Gecko Warriors troop. And I'm pretty sure I brush those guys aside. The uh, Slayers go into his Fire Elemental. And I thought maybe I could get rid of him because I put Brew of Strength on him. Of course, the first turn I'm hindered because of the wall. And uh, he had done five wounds to me with the, with the, an assortment of fireballs the turn before. So I was kind of on the edge of uh, being fragile right there uh, against uh, the, the massive greater fire elemental. I really like these old GW guys, these uh, heavily armored dwarves. I mean, they just look like little tanks. And I probably need two or three more of them. So if anybody has any out there and then would PM me or... Uh, or uh, put something on the channel. I'll, I'll give you a reasonable amount of money for you. I'm not paying $50 a model. I mean, a reasonable amount of money for them. Uh, but like I say, I think I need three or four uh, to finish out my other unit. I've got that other unit, you know, with, with some character models in the back of it to stoke them up. But I uh, really like these models. Yes, I do see those tyrants sneaking up. That's why the general large beast took off and, and just backed up max distance uh, backwards to... Uh, maybe reposition for a better a better fight the uh, John is really jammed up right here on this flank but I, I realize now that it was totally on purpose because he's close enough with those massive bases to hold two tokens at a time with that unit of ceremonial guard I just I didn't quite get it to begin with what he was doing but now it makes perfect sense to move forward I can't get behind him because I'm dwarves and then uh, hold those objectives and that's why he fought so hard for the one here where his phoenix is and the Rhinosaur Cav is because he needed that one too uh, to, uh, to win the game. Yes, this is where I cheated. I went ahead and charged into his uh, Gecko Slasher with the uh, unit of Rangers. And so that happened. I'm sorry, John. I, I, for the life of me, I thought that they had headstrong. And everything else just opened fire and destroyed the tyrants utterly this turn. Also known as the smoking hole, because there's a big hole in the line now where there's nothing in it. The uh, Over on the extreme left, you see that the um, Lachilodon is now gone. You also see that there is a uh, the Berserker Lord and the General on Large Beast there to oppose the uh, dragon. And... I'm sitting here talking to Carl in full view of John. John's just listening to me because I said, look, you could set up a trap that no matter where that dragon charges, you'll be able to get him. And, of course, John, the next turn, just moves off a different direction. But that was really the point was to get him, uh, get him to uh, either commit or not commit with that dragon. So I think that was uh, – I mean, on our end, it was a good move, but the um, – but it was just funny that we're sitting there talking. I mean, I'm talking – to Carl trying to help him get a you know make a lesson out of this like if John charges here you can get him if he does this you can get him and, uh, and so uh, John the next turn just moves off a different direction which is the right move I mean if you're gonna I mean if somebody's talking about the trap they're setting for you and then uh, you're gonna get into it you 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 weren't very smart player and, and John's a smart player so he wasn't gonna fall for that but uh, I just thought it was funny when uh, the next turn I went to the bathroom and came back, and when he moved, the dragon was a totally different place. So that was kind of funny. Uh, the Earth Elementals did kill the um, unit of geckos in front of it, so that's going to kind of open up a spot there. Yeah, Garrick Heavy Hand and the uh, other unit of uh, Iron Guard, 
they go ahead and kill the the uh, gecko warriors, and uh, Garrett goes ahead and overruns and stops, you know, like a millimeter away from the uh, rhinosaur calf. I did do some wounds to the uh, fire elemental, but that guy was pesky. He was he was because. Because John was sitting there back behind him every time I do wounds to him, sitting back there healing the crap out of him. And so it was kind of amusing in a way that uh, that uh, it was like I beat him down, he comes back up. I beat him down, he comes back up. All right. John skillfully moved his dragon up here around all the traps I had set for him, which doesn't work if you have to tell the guy what the trap is before it happens. Over here. John has his ceremonial guard holding, I think there's a token under there. Yep. And here, the nasty pterodon looking things, scorch wings, have charged into my beloved unit of ironclads. All right, John has tempting me over here with these silly. Croxigore looking things, what are they called? Tyrants. Moved them up and is still right outside, like a quarter millionth of an inch outside of my charge range for my general on large beast. Here are the fire elemental, greater fire elemental, char counter charges into the slayers who are up to five wounds. Uh -oh. And over here, the SARS Cav counter charged the unit of Iron Guard in the woods. So, I uh, guess the nice thing is I did do a couple of wounds to them, so they are disrupted. So, a little less thunderous charge and stuff on me this turn. He wants the easy flush of victory here. Here comes a whole bunch of attacks. Yes. What's that, Millie? Millie three. Uh, missed two of them. Crush two. He named it once. Uh, seven wounds. Okay. That will put you way over the top. You can just roll snake eyes and knock them out. You're dead. Uh, um, no crush. I've got armor five, so this is, this is going to be a long odds. Berserkers died this turn horribly. The thing that happened this turn is that uh, John listened to me try to help Carl with his uh, dilemma of how to handle the dragon over there. And then John went ahead and flew the dragon down into the woods. And I think maybe he just forgot that they shambled. And so all Carl had to do was to turn to the right and then surge like two inches into him. And uh, that's going to be a bad deal for the dragon. So, despite the odds of it happening, the Scorchwings finished off those ironclads like zip in one turn. All they really could do, though, is turn to face. And then Carl was able to surge the uh, victorious Earth Elementals into them. The Earth Elementals had finished off the dragon and overran toward the middle of the board. And now they're in position to take out the Scorchwings as well. John was rolling really, really well with his uh, Saurus Cavalry, I mean his Rhinosaur Cavalry, and had been nine wounds to my Armor 6 unit, which is wow. And the thing is, they held, and then the unit of Ironclad went ahead and flank charged them. Now, it's going to be hindered and going to be hard to hit. I think it's fives to hit and fives to wound, so it's, it's not going to be the, the super effect that I was hoping for obviously. And then uh, Henrik, or Garrick, I mean, uh, charges into the Ancients just to try to keep them uh, out of the game. And, you know, I really thought he would do better against them, but uh, he, he kind of putzed out on this one. So, yes, we finally got rid of the Rhinosaur Cavalry and now are turning all of our bases to go toward the, uh, the token that's there in the woods. My general large beast, he uh, had cruised into the fire elemental and just, and just did again tremendous damage but he had been getting healed so much that i really couldn't take him out and after that of course the the Keladon flank charged me and managed to waver me and now i am stuck right there and just going to get whipped up on by the fire elemental and the Keladon next turn i'm afraid so the 
earth elementals flushed with victory. They had went ahead and destroyed the the uh, scorch wings, and you can see also the general on large beast is moving in to secure that objective, and we're trying to get the uh, earth elementals into a better position uh, for the very last turns of the game. Over here, my troop of crossbowmen are valiantly guarding the uh, objective on this side of the table. Every objective, this is late game, every objective is super important here. And so the uh, they turn to face the tyrants of all things. It's like the worst nightmare of anything uh, or is a unit of, of tyrants. The salamander right flank had just basically ceased to exist except for that single unit of ceremonial guard, which those are good enough to exist because I don't think I had the firepower there. Maybe if I started early in the game, uh, you know, shooting and stuff at them, you know, we would have had a chance at them. But really the big thing now is just to uh, keep them from pivoting over and trying to get two objectives at once with their large base size. So the general on large beast died this turn. It's, uh, and uh, that leaped, of course, a big hole right there. And you, he's closing in on me with the tyrants on one side, the Lachilodon and the fire elemental. But I'm really pressuring him right here on the uh, on the left side of this picture. The silly ancients roll really, really well and waver Garrick heavy hand. And, of course, he's going to get some back. But I think the next turn, I think he just rolls really well again and just blows him away. So uh, we'll see what happens. Over here on our left flank, we just simply move the earth elementals to block in case he makes a late rush into the uh, middle of the table. Finally, the steel behemoth is coming around the corner and is the uh, uh, berserker lord. They're all, they're all kind of around there uh, to threaten him in case there's a turn seven. So you're really going to have to figure out which way to turn if there is. The detachment of shield breakers is holding the objective there on the left so I've, you can see in the picture here that we have two of our objectives uh, secured he has one up there with that unit for some John, reason John moved up his tyrants I guess to try to get that objective but I went ahead and charged them with the crossbows I know that there's nothing they're not going to hurt them but that's not the point the point is now you can see that I have unit strength four right around that objective and and he would have a maximum uh well he could have four too i'm not sure what tyrants are but he's not within three inches that's the big reason that that we're able to secure this one for ourselves so this is the very last picture you can see that i am in fact holding this one down here i actually held the one in the woods as well uh because i had more unit strength than the ancients there that was within three inches of it he had to turn basically the uh big unit of ceremonial guard off to one side or I would have flank charged him if he hadn't. So he's going to hold those two objectives over there and he's got the one on the other side. So that gives him three points. We have one, two on this side and one, two on the other side. And that will give us four points and the win. This was a very, very tight game. Carl had to leave right at the end of it. And uh, so I was, so he left and the battle was up in the air. So uh, he was probably excited this morning when I got the text and said that we're able to pull it out. John played a superb game. He should have won. And I think maybe if I hadn't cheated him over there with those dwarves, he probably would have. But it's hard to say because I had other stuff there that could have uh, taken out that, that uh, gecko slasher because we had all that shooting, and the shooting couldn't shoot at anything because it was all fighting. So the next turn, he would have caught, you know, uh, 22, 32-something shots with piercing two uh, on the following turn. So it, it – it's not a foregone conclusion that, that, that my cheating got it, but, you know, I, I, I totally admit it. I embrace it. Uh, I'm sorry because I just, I, for some reason, I thought all dwarves had headstrong, and, and I knew the elementals didn't, but I thought all dwarves did. So uh, my bad. I apologize. Uh, as far as, as things that happened, over on the left side, we just did not push hard enough. We should have been able easily able to uh, push forward because we had that steel behemoth, and that thing is cool. I'd never even looked at the stats on it. And, I was I was having fun with that backstory of that the dwarves had stolen it from my my empire guys because it is it's my it is in fact the hammer of midland out of my old empire army, so uh, it was kind of cool. I like I say I'd rather never really use that model. I think I'm going to go buy one now that I've I've seen what it does because uh, that thing's cool. So over there, like I said, we kind of drag our feet. We did manage to get rid of the uh, all those nasty combat units. The uh, 
the dragon and the tyrants and the gecko slasher over on that side of the table. Uh, I was over here with mostly infantry, and I just didn't have the uh, hitting power, you know, to knock these troops down. And uh, their armor is so high, and I had no crushing to speak of except the slashers. That was why I was charging them into the elemental, because I thought I could take him down. But he was just healing him back up so fast I couldn't, I couldn't, uh, I couldn't do anything about it. And uh, probably would have been handy to have the uh, Berserker Lord over there, at least to keep the Phoenix honest and that hero with the, uh, the Mage Priest that was also healing and fireballing me. So that would have probably been a better move on both of our part was to deploy him there. But I was afraid of the dragon over on the left side. So we kept the uh, Berserker Lord over there in, just in case so he could uh, at least uh, ground the dragon and maybe beat on him just a little bit. So anyway, that was a it was a good battle, though. I mean, it was so tight. And uh, I think, though, that if, if we would have had more speed, such as Brock Riders, you know, this game could have been totally different because we could have just pushed up the middle so quickly with the Brock Riders and then turned against both flanks. It would have been a, it would have been very hard to defeat. But then again, I think John would have deployed differently if we had something fast that could do those kinds of things. But um, maybe even if we, maybe we should have even put the Steel Behemoth in the middle. That way, it could flex either left or right uh, into the flank of these things, and and that's the bad thing about playing a a loaded flank is that and reason why they always say don't split your forces in the in a in front of the enemy it's the same reason because a strong middle push will trap the each side against the edge they they have no maneuver room once they're in there they just have they just basically end up forming a little logger um, and to keep their their flanks from getting from getting uh destroyed so that's that's the that, i mean that's the lesson of the the double the double envelopment uh works sometimes but on the other times, you know, there's certain armies you just don't do it against. You'd be better off just deploying across the table or what, and just waiting one side, and hopefully the, the uh, that would work. And, and then uh, also using an echelon attack against uh, these kind of things where one side lags back and the other side moves up and just destroys one side of the army by, by not, and then not really engaging with, the, with your other flank. You're just trying to hold them back. So anyway... Uh, it was an interesting tactical battle just because of that. I had a good time with the uh, talking to Carl about how to keep the dragon from doing stuff and then uh, talking right in front of John. I don't, I don't mean to down John because I mean, he knew all that stuff. I was just telling Carl out loud, like, hey, dude, you know, you could do this, you could do this, you could do this, you could do this. And then John, for some reason, turns and moves the dragon into the woods next to the elementals. And I looked at him and I go, John, do you realize that thing shambles? And he's like, oh, no. And that was the end of the dragon. So. Uh, he went out with a poof as opposed to a, a roar this game and uh i don't think it turned the game either but it was just it was just the irony of the whole thing i mean really what the dragon should have done was turned around and flew over to this side of the table uh the side that you're looking at now because he really could have helped out uh with my uh because I would be hanging in the wind, you know, my flanks would be hanging in the wind over here. If the dragon was over here, uh, they could easily took all of our objectives on this side of the table. So, uh, I guess a weird game. It's kind of fun, just the tactical stuff in it. I was really intrigued by, and I hope you really enjoyed it. The uh, I don't play dwarves very often. They're, they're kind of growing on me now, but not overly much. I'm going to put them back in the box. <laughs> I probably won't touch them again for a while. So, uh, it was fun getting them all out and, and play. I, st I still had more. I still had more regiments uh, to use. So uh, I wasn't, this wasn't all of my stuff. And, and I was, I was pretty, pretty happy with, uh, with how the dwarfs and the free dwarfs uh, held out to, to hit some tough foes. So uh, next week we should have my new Dwarven Alliance game. Uh, the Dwarven Alliance is basically a Northern Alliance army that has a lot of dwarfs in it uh, because dwarfs regiments in that army are really cheap and they have Fury, and they have Wild Charge 1, which is kind of cool. I mean, it's, it's a different take on dwarves, but uh, I like the fact that they're, they're inexpensive. And, and with the cool characters of the Northern Alliance, such as Clarion or the Thane with uh, Talonar Standard, that is a tough bunch of guys to uh, get rid of because those dwarves are going to have darn near uh, horde-level morale with Talonar Standard nearby with the Rally 1. So anyway. Hope to see you next week. Hope you watch. Hope you subscribe. Hope you uh, 
Uh, click a like every once in a while. That would make me really happy. Thank you so much.